Welcome back. Today we're going to be chatting about relative energy deficit in sport, REDS. Um, we've got a two-part series kicking off on Endurance Essentials. John's going to lead out uh, on Monday using his coaching, both at the elite level and amateur level, as well as his experience as a sports medicine practitioner, a sports doc down in New Zealand. And then the following Monday, I'm going to try and keep it real, offer my take, uh, and thinking about it at a broader, sort of higher level. And what I wanted to do today is just walk you through the reference material that we link up in the articles, so you can give that a read. Uh, we've got some articles, got a podcast. You can give those a, a listen as well as reviewing those. And then I just want to touch on some key points that John and I want to highlight for you if you find yourself in a situation where you feel like you may be running an energy deficit and it's not working for you. So let's kick off. So let's start with the resources that we linked up. So 2003, let's get me out of the way here. And I'll put these in the YouTube uh, comments and I'll link it up for you. So 2003, uh, IOC uh, consensus statement. So that sort of lays out their take. And in the podcast, I'm going to show you one of the members of that committee uh, talks through it. And then as well, related to the consensus statement, is another document that you can walk through, sort of like a summary document that you can walk through with your uh, medical uh, support team. As well, when that dropped this year, more recently, an article came out, which I touch on, which asks a rather provocative question, uh, does relative energy deficit deficiency in sport red syndrome exist? Like, does the syndrome even exist? It's a provocative question, but, and they raise a lot of great points in this. Some of their points I touch on in my article, but I'd recommend you go right into that article. It's got some interesting ideas, and you can read them kind of back to back. And then there's an interesting podcast uh, with Inside Exercise uh, uh, that I'll link up as well. That's on YouTube, and you can give that a, give that a listen, which is kind of good, digs a little deeper. The, the things that I liked in this podcast is it talked about the real world challenges of trying to quantify energy intake and energy burn and how even small mistakes in measuring can add up to a situation that puts an athlete in a negative uh, position in, a, in an energy deficit. And even with our best methods of tracking the known errors uh, are enough to lead us into trouble. So just counting is not necessarily going to be the answer uh, to whatever situation you may find yourself in because it's just not possible to be all that accurate. And there's a lot of other great points. Conversation is a little over an hour. Uh, well worth your time just for general education. I, I really enjoyed that one. So let's come on to... John's part one. And I just want to highlight a couple points there for you. First thing is if you think you've got, you're having an issue, you should sit down ideally with your coach and your medical practitioner and try and figure out how to put a team in place to support you. And this team, John sort of mentions the member of the team, members of the team, and he'll chat you through that. The other thing that John would want to stress is to avoid checklist medicine. And what I mean by that and what John means by that is when you read the consensus statement, you'll see all these categories and you'll be like working your way through and you'd say, oh, you know, I, I tick this, I tick this, I tick this, I must have it. Not necessarily. It, it requires an experienced sports doc, ideally, you know, somebody like John that's sort of seen, oh, geez, for hundreds, maybe thousands of situations and has a broad experience and can work with you and the rest of the team to see really where you're at. So don't just assume uh, your diagnosis. Sit down with some experts and try and figure that out. Next point, support team. So they're going to build this team around you. Now, in addition 
to that team. I would recommend that you work on building a wider team. So you, you, you'll create this team around yourself in an athletic sense and supporting your health, but you need a wider team, social connection, friends, family, community, because this specialist team that you're building is ideally you're probably going to grow out of them uh, over time. And if you find yourself socially isolated, that can be a contributing factor to underperformance. So make an effort to get some friends, uh, training partners, and get yourself connected socially because I think that can really help you. Here's another point, and this is the point that's made in Does Red S Exist? Red's uh, exists in that article. And then John and other high level coaches will point this out to you. Low energy availability, short periods of it, using it in workouts, uh, can be adaptive. So some athletes will be in a situation of low energy availability by virtue of their high work rates and it's adaptive. They don't run into trouble. So not everybody that finds themselves in a low energy situation runs into problems. And this is a point that's made in the article, uh, you know, does REDS exist? Does the syndrome exist? You know, how can we explain why some athletes have low energy and they're fine and other athletes who have low energy run into trouble? Now they propose, we slide down on my article in part two, and rather than putting, this is the from the IOC statement, it sort of puts low energy availability in the middle, the hub is sort of the driving factor. And what the other articles proposes is, look, let's look at a broader uh, categories. Let's look at broader criteria. You know, there's the training, the exercise, environmental, mental health, eating disorders, disordered eating, nutrition, sleep, overall stress, and then undiagnosed conditions. There could be other health issues here that you'll need to eliminate or address in partnership with your doctor. So it's not all about simply eating more. If we ate more, a lot of times these things uh, would, still be, would still be there. So we need to look at the overall lifestyle. And a lot of times when you're running into trouble, it is an issue with your overall life structure. And the low energy availability is one aspect. And one aspect, an important aspect that needs to be addressed, but there's other things that will need to be addressed over time. Um, eating more is just not going to fix the situation for you. So final point. I talked about how low energy availability can be adaptive for short periods of time. Same thing with periods of higher stress. And one of the things you're probably going to notice is that if you run into trouble, you should look at your overall stress load. And that's what the chart on the right-hand side is getting at with a number of those criteria. Too much stress will manifest as issues with sleep, issues with our mental health. I talked about that in the uh, recovery playlist. Uh, I gave you some techniques for improving mental health there. It'll manifest as illness and injury. It might manifest as just lack of motivation, going stale. And so the smart athlete is going to be cycling stress up and down. Now, this is within the week, within the month, within the season, between seasons, across Olympic cycles, if you're an elite athlete, a top athlete. So thinking about that as well to make your overall stress loads adaptive as opposed to getting yourself in a situation where you're run down thinking that you might be dealing with either overtraining syndrome, relative energy deficiency in sports syndrome, whatever, cycle the stress. Anyhow, we got our two-part series dropping on Monday. It'll be linked up in the comments. Wishing you a great 2025. We'll be back with more content in the new year. Thanks for listening.